Hi guys, Andy here. Now you may have been watching four or five days ago when I unboxed the Unihertz Jelly. Jelly phone, jelly. Um, and there it is. And honestly, I was really, really impressed. Um, I likened it back to, if you if you used to watch me when I did my Hemadroids channel, Hemadroids done it, um, I did a Galaxy S2 unboxing, which went massive, like 1.7 million views or something at the moment. Um, and I loved the S2, it was such an amazing device, it was so thin, it was, you took it out of the box and it was just such an impressive device. Um, and I likened it a bit to that, I took this out and I thought, wow, this is amazing. Little screen with all things going on, it all, you know, wow, stunning. Um, and I was really impressed. And then I had to use it for a day. <laughs> and yeah, not so impressed, I suppose. So I'm here now to explain kind of why perhaps it's not as great as I hoped it might be. So let's just kick off with the design. It's actually a little bit like a sort of a, a shrunken HTC Desire Z, if you remember that. Um, very similar. So I keep I keep thinking it should kind of slide out somewhere and there'll be a keyboard underneath it. Uh, it's got a 2.45 inch screen, but actually the bezels are quite large, if you can see down the edges and around the sides. Now my math could be completely wrong, but I found that it's got a less than a 50% screen uh, coverage on the front of the phone. I mean, it doesn't really look, it looks like it's bigger than 50% there, so it could just be my maths. I might have done it backwards, and maybe it's, because it's like 40 something percent, maybe it was 60, maybe I've, maybe I've calculated the bezel. Um, anyway, but yeah, generally, um, yeah, it's not it's not exactly edge to edge, but that's fine. Um, it's also it's actually quite thick. When you think how small it is, I suppose it needs to have some space for all the technology to go into. So it's thirteen point three millimeters deep, which is relatively thick. I mean, you could probably put two of the thinnest phones together in the world and have the same sort of thickness. But it is only ninety two millimeters high and forty three millimeters wide, and only sixty grams in weight. To give you an idea, I think the Note 8 is 190 grams. So you could have three of these um, to get this, to, well, still be lighter than the Note 8. There's a notification light, I don't know if we see it now, along the bottom where the home button is there, that flashes when you've got notifications. Um, it's available in black, blue, and white. Um, so you've got a few choices there. And all in all, I mean, it's, I think it's actually quite a nice looking device. The buttons. They feel responsive enough. There's, you know, there's there's, there's uh, enough feel in the buttons. Um, if we talk about the hardware, the CPU is a quad core 1.1 gigahertz CPU. You get one gig of RAM in the normal phone, two gig of RAM in the Pro, which is what this is. You get eight gig, eight gig storage in the normal and 16 gig in this Pro. Um, not a not a lot. I mean, definitely the regular one. It's interesting. I didn't realize the. I think they they had no intention of doing a pro until people gave them feedback saying that's just not enough. You need more than one gig of RAM and eight gig of ROM. It, it won't do. So they produced the pro. Uh, you could argue they should have just have made the pro the regular and been done with it. But because I can't imagine this with one gig of RAM basically. Uh, the screen itself is a uh, four thirty two by two forty. LCD screen that's 201 pixels per inch and it's okay when you're looking at it straight on but then I don't know how well the camera is going to show but as you get come off center very quickly it kind of fades off to the point that you know I mean a, a decent screen you will still be able to see what's going on at that sort of angle so face up it looks okay and actually even though it's only 200 pixels per inch I think we get far too carried away with that and actually you know it's okay that's all right. It's not massively bright either. So in my testing, I'm not sure what I've opened there. That's as bright as it goes. And that's about 350 lumens. 348 was the highest it went. So that is pretty low. Only one device I've ever tried, and that was one of the Amazon Fire tablets, has, uh, has been lower. Um, let's put it back down a little bit again. Not that it's exactly dazzling. It is dual SIM. If I think, let's see if we can take the back off without it rebooting. So it's dual SIM, and it has a micro SD card slot. So although you've only got 16 gig or maybe even 8 gig of storage, 
Has that stayed on? Yep. Oh, mind you, I'm going to take the battery out anyway. To so hopefully, there you can see it is dual sim. The two sims. That's the first sim. That's the second sim because I went into that one and said not that it really matters, but that's sim two. Um, I would just say there in the corner, I should have looked at sim one, sim two, and that's where the micro SD card goes. Uh, not a huge amount else to see. There's a camera. We'll come to the camera later on. And the battery, the 950 milliamp hour battery. So let's put that all back together and start it booting back up. So yeah, that's quite good. Dual SIM and micro SD card slot. Yeah, and removable battery. They're all they're all plus points. Well done, thank you. It also has five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which kind of impressed me because I've a lot of devices on the budget end of things they don't bother with that. It's only the 2.4 gigahertz. So that's quite good. It also does have GPS, uh, the G sensor, compass, gyroscope. All that kind of, uh, all the other sort of sensors that, again, you they, you would have thought they might have skimped on in a small budget device, but they didn't. They're all there. So, what does all that hardware give us? Well, in my Geekbench testing, not a huge amount. Uh, Fourteen hundred, which isn't great. The chart that I've put on the screen for you there, that that only shows the bottom portion. You know, the, you go right the way up to six or seven thousand for the top ends. Also. The speaker, we've not mentioned it's there in the back look, um, is rather weak as well. In fact, it's the lowest that I've tested. Whoopsie. Not by a huge amount, so it's not ridiculous. And and I have been I have been listening to things on the speaker. Let's just see if if I can now show you. Not that it's easy for me to portray the speaker on my microphone off to the off to the side here, but uh, And obviously, just just having booted up. So although it, it it benches very poorly, you can see there actually it's you know it's reasonably responsive. You see a bit a bit of lag and jitter in there, but it's not it's not too bad. There are times and it's normally been nearer the lower portion. See there, it's now it's counting like it's playing, but. Nothing playing as yet. So it has done that to me a bit before. I don't quite know what it's doing when it does that. We've got the. There we go. See, that kind of took about about three attempts for me to actually for me to actually oh my my apps work or regular reminders all these things like oh my god all these things I need to remember to do um and I did find that generally it seemed to be the key the button sort of lower down so that's that's working fine now there were times I had to kind of hammer away a couple of times or on the camera for example can we bring the camera up if you give it a light you watch it'll work perfectly now. There you go, it worked perfectly. If I started filming quite often, <laughs> yes, it's working, working perfectly there. Um, there was a few times I had to press the stop filming about three times before it actually did it. it it's not so great on a light little dab, and it, I felt like I had to press a little more firmly. Maybe, maybe it needs more sort of more of my finger to uh, to register the response, which isn't great when you're trying to type because obviously you're trying to be you're trying to be relatively um, Relatively, oh, look at that. Precise. If I'm oh, proceeded. How did I get proceeded in there? Precise. So actually, I've, I've not done. Oh, I, I did spell it wrong. Relatively. That's probably me rather than the keyboard. Um, I did. Find I got some rather random messages. So actually, oh well, um, messages. So actually, that <laughs> in my demo there, or oh, apart from the U look, oops, should be I. 
actually that's worked very well <laughs> in my experience I did send some garbage a couple of times because it is a very small keyboard and uh, and is quite hard to type on unless you're really paying quite close attention but there you go what do you expect from a 2.45 inch screen I guess if we move on to the camera so the front facing is 2 megapixel the rear facing is 8 megapixel um, I have to say really not very good results um, it's not a particularly quick uh, camera as you saw so I was taking the picture I suppose earlier so that's that is that is quite a delay between the shutter and actual photo taking um, the images are a little bit hazy the colors are a little bit dull there is an HDR mode uh, not particularly great I would say there's a panoramic mode as well but uh, which you see down on the left hand side there you've also got actually yes yeah, so face beauty mode I did I did take a picture of myself I, I didn't think it possible for me to be more beautiful than I already am but it has a beauty mode so I thought I'd try it um, and interesting it just kind of I don't know smoothed out my skin a little bit I suppose um, then there's the panoramic mode or panorama mode which actually works quite well it gives you a sort of false horizon can you see that and as you pan it sort of helps you keep along the keep along the horizon but the image that came out was 544 pixels by 192 pixels that's, that's I mean that's silly why would you even that's a thumbnail why would I want something that small bizarre um, then we move on to the video so it comes out as a as a 3GP file format. What is this? A, a Nokia from 2003? 3GP? Um, hmm. The highest it goes is 720p. It defaults to like, I think to 480. So do remember to turn that up. I mean 480p's again, really? Uh, I mean I suppose I've, maybe I'm being overly harsh because we are talking about a 60 gram phone, but yeah not not a huge amount of use front facing video the best it does is 480p that's well i think that's the best it does and again really generally front or back even the back the better uh, camera lens some of the worst video you're going to see on a phone released in 2017 unfortunately so let's talk about the software so it does come with android version 7.0 which i think is a plus well done um well, that tells the actual CPU. It was a Cortex A53. Uh, this latest security patch shows the 5th of July, which is, well, two months out of date, so that's not ideal. Uh, we also see slightly in here, I don't feel that the scroll is out, just a little flick and it, it can fly through. It doesn't seem that consistent with the scrolling, and that's not just in the settings, that's in, that's in apps as well. So let me go into Trello, for example. So again, a bit of a delay there while we're waiting. Not the snappiest, but we get there. And it just, do you see how much that, how quickly that moved? It just seems, yeah, just slightly inconsistent. Um, then, I mean, we've mentioned the keyboard. Now, it went reasonably, reasonably well. Uh, at that point, but I do wonder if they shouldn't have packaged it with a T9 keyboard. Do you remember them again? We're going back to 2003, but that might have been better as a default option. Now, I tried switching the keyboard up and it didn't seem to work. I installed a T9 keyboard and I couldn't get it to actually use it as the default keyboard, which is a bit of a bit of a downer. Um, but software wise, you know, there are times it feels quite slick. So, all of this, you know, this is all pretty good. I would say this is all quite smooth moving. Let's, let's, let's play Instagram. Roulette. Is it gonna be oh it is it's there's not there's no there's no boobs, no boobs still. Maybe I'm I'm just lucky that the uh Formula One's on. Still no boobs, look at that. Um so yeah, I mean it it looks it actually looks kind of it looks quite nice generally. You know, it's kind of dinky and cool and cute. It all fitting on, you know, these apps are used to seeing on huge big screens and they fit that's it okay so again there sometimes you're just wondering did it register my tap or do I need to tap again again the slight weird inconsistencies of the scrolling but all in all I mean it's not this this makes you think it's not too bad it's just 
sometimes it's just the delays that you get opening certain things. I mean, that opened pretty quick, actually. Um, but just sometimes you're left thinking, oh, did it did it register my tap, or do I need to do I need to try again? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, software, yeah, well done, it's, it's, it's Nougat 7.0, a bit late on the security patch, but I mean, hopefully they get Oreo out reasonably quick. If we move on to talk about the battery, I won't bother taking it out again, you've seen it once. It's 950 million hours removal battery, as we've seen. They claim on the website three days battery life. I don't see how that's possible, just from the terrible battery life that I've got. Um, it scored the lowest on my battery test, where I do a one-hour battery test of playing some video, then just reloading a page over and over, and it finished on 77% after an hour. Um, another time, and granted this was on the first cycle, but I'm finding more and more that first cycle, second cycle, third cycle, not as different as they used to be. But it lost 27% overnight. So I can only assume they've got some software issues that's, that's draining it, because that's, I mean, that's pretty horrific, really. When I plugged it into charge, it always seems quite slow charging, but I think that's just me being a bit, I mean, maybe I'm thinking it's only a 950 milliamp hour, that should charge up, you know, in, in no time. Um, but 15 minutes on charge pushed it 10%. Um, and I, so I think about two hours for full charge. Uh, I guess that's not too bad. It's not great. Um, for such a small battery, you would have hoped it would charge up quicker. If it charged up in like 50 minutes, you could forgive it like getting hammered through <coughs> through a day at this point I normally talk about hackability I don't think there is any at this point um, you're stuck with the ROM that they give you but it seems pretty stock Android so hopefully most of us are quite happy with that so um, my conclusions then the novelty factor is high uh, performance is not it's pretty much in the bottom two of everything that I tested um, as I've mentioned, a lot of time you're not sure if it's lagged or if it's not registered to the touch. Quite often down the bottom, and in the video so far, it's actually been very good and behaved itself. Um, the keyboard is hard to type on. Again, I managed to type quite a quite a message, quite a good message um, just now. But I was when I was trying to talk to people on on um, Hangouts. Sometimes it's I would take so long going back and adjusting words, and quite annoying basically. Um, I think it would have been interesting if they'd gone for the small the small form factor, but they'd spend a little bit more money to try and make it a bit of a better performer. Um, you know, maybe if they pushed it to 200 pounds, because maybe the form factor, maybe some people are thinking, actually, I'd really like a phone that, that is that small, and I can, you know, I can slip in my bag nice and easy on my pocket or whatever, um, and it's nice and dinky, but, but the performance of it is quite a downer, basically, if I'm honest. So, in my couple of days that I did use the device, it always brought a smile to people's faces, especially maybe it's because I'm 6'3 and 280 pounds, but, and I'm wearing a little dinky phone like this, me um, But at the same, yeah, always brought a smile to people's face, but also quite often people going, uh, or oh, why? Because <laughs> we're so used to the big screens that we have these days, I think it doesn't really register, you know, people can't comprehend why you'd want to go back to something this small. Other people have mentioned, actually, that'd be really good as a phone you might take on your, with yourself on a night out or something like that, um, where it's not, a, it's not you know, massively valuable and it can fit into your pocket and, and not really get in the way. Um, so, I don't know, it's up to you. Just be aware the performance, it is a budget phone. It's not just that it's a dinky little phone, it's a budget phone. Um, and it's so so you're gonna you're gonna feel that if you're using it day to day. But there you go, the Jelly Phone by Unihertz. I think you can buy it now or pre-order it off their website for $125. The exchange rate's getting a little better, so maybe that's kind of 100 pounds, 105 pounds. I don't know. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. For now, my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.